A mix minus is essentially a mix that includes all sources minus the signal from the person you're sending the mix to. This is useful when you want to avoid microphone feedback or echo, especially when dealing with long latency or delay. Let's say you're setting up a live show where the people on stage will be having a conversation with someone joining remotely via a Zoom call. Or imagine you're setting up a live stream that features a remote guest. The signals from all of the guests will be mixed together and sent to the audience, but the people on stage need to hear the person from the Zoom call, and the person on the Zoom call needs to hear the people on stage. If you simply sent the main mix to the person on the Zoom call, that person would hear the other participants, but they would also hear themselves with a very distracting delay. Leave a comment below if you've ever experienced this, where you hear an echo of yourself during a video call. It's very difficult to speak in such a situation, so we need to fix this and send the person on the Zoom call a mix including all of the audio minus their own audio. This is where a mix minus comes in. Let me show you how to set this up. First, we'll set up a mix minus with a mixer, and then I'll show you how you can do the same thing within your computer or audio interface. For these examples, I'll be setting up a live stream on YouTube with two in-person hosts and one remote guest on Zoom. To keep things simple when using a mixer, we'll use two separate laptops. One laptop for streaming to YouTube and one laptop that will host the Zoom call. And to make it easy to get audio in and out of each laptop, let's connect a simple two-in, two-out audio interface to each. Later in the video, you'll learn how to do all of this using one computer and a more advanced audio interface. Setting up the main mix to the YouTube live stream audience is easy. I'll just connect the main outputs of the mixer to the inputs on the live stream audio interface. We can decide what is sent to this mix using the faders on each input channel. Within the live stream computer, we just need to ensure that the audio interface connected to it is selected as the audio input device within YouTube. I'll connect my microphone to channel one on the mixer and my co-host's microphone to channel two on the mixer. Then I'll send each of these sources to the main mix using the channel faders. Some mixers, such as the one I'm using, require that you also assign the input channel to the main mix. So I'll go ahead and do that by pressing the main button on each of these channels. To get audio from the remote guest into our system, I'll select the interface connected to the Zoom laptop as the output device within Zoom. This will send the remote guest's audio out of output one and two on the interface, which I will connect to stereo input seven and eight on the mixer. Again, I'll use the channel fader to send the remote guest's audio to the main mix. The audience can now hear the local microphones and the remote guest. The in-person co-hosts can hear the remote guest using the headphone output on the Zoom audio interface but the remote guest can't hear anything yet, so we need to set up a mix minus for them. Remember, sending the Zoom guest the main mix will result in an echo on their end, so let's use this aux output on the mixer to create a mix minus for the guest. I'll connect aux output one on the mixer to input one on the Zoom audio interface and select this as the audio input within Zoom. Then I'll decide what goes to that mix using the aux one sends on each channel on the mixer. Let's send the two in-room microphone channels to aux one, but not the Zoom guest channel. A complete mix minus the remote guest. I'll admit, it's a bit complicated to do this with two laptops and a mixer, but here's what the signal flow looks like in the end. Luckily, many audio interfaces have virtual mixing and matrixing capabilities built in, and this makes setup a lot simpler. For example, an RME interface like this Fireface UCX2 is perfect for this type of setup because of the flexibility built into the included Total Mix software. If your interface has a virtual mixer like this, you can determine which physical inputs and software sources are sent to each of the physical output mixes. If you're using a Mac, this setup might require a few extra pieces of free software. So if you're a Mac user, Hang in there, I'll help you get set up in just a second. On Windows, we see all of the possible mixes show up within the setup page of our YouTube live stream, and this is also the case when choosing the input and output device within Zoom on Windows. 
every possible input and output on the RME interface shows up as an option. This gives us a ton of flexibility compared to Mac, where we only see one option within YouTube and Zoom. Again, I'll show you a workaround in a second, but let's set this up on Windows so it's easy to understand the mechanics of how to set up a mix minus. First, we need to decide what output to use for our main mix. I'm using analog one and two to feed my studio monitors, so I'll use analog three and four to feed the live stream. That means I'll select analog three and four as the audio source within YouTube. These are actually audio inputs though, so we need to use the loopback feature within Total Mix to route output three and four back into input three and four. RME's Total Mix software is extremely flexible. I just click the mix I want to control, and then all of these faders for the physical inputs and software sources become sends to that mix. So I can go ahead and route my two in-room microphones to the live stream mix, which are connected to analog input one and two. We also need to route the remote guest's audio to the main mix. Within Zoom, we can simply select which software output we want to use for the audio output device. This is useful if you want to keep all of your audio from different software separated, which is a big benefit of using Windows for this type of live streaming application. But to keep it simple, let's just choose the standard software output one and two. Within Total Mix, we see that signal coming in from the remote guest, and we can route that to the main mix as well. Now that our main mix is set up, we need to set up a mix minus for the remote guest. Let's do this on another mix. I'll choose analog output five and six this time. I'll send that back in as an input using the loopback button, and we'll send only the in-room microphones to this mix, not the software output from Zoom, meaning that the Zoom guest will hear everyone's audio minus their own. On Mac, you might need some additional software. I'd recommend downloading two free pieces of software, Laudiocast and Black Hole. I'll put a link to each of these in the description below this video. There are many other options, but these will get you started for free. Once these are installed, we'll go through a similar process as we did on Windows, but this time we'll have to work within the limitations of Mac OS. Within the YouTube live stream setup page, we only see one option for our audio interface, so let's go ahead and select this option. This corresponds to input one and two. That means we need to set up our main mix on mix one and two. Unfortunately, this is what most people use for studio monitors, but it's the only option on Mac, so I'll need to either turn off the studio monitors or use a different mix to feed the monitors to avoid creating a feedback loop. Then we can use the loopback feature and route our in-room microphones to the main mix. Next, let's set the Zoom audio output to the audio interface, which again corresponds to software output one and two within Total Mix. At this point, the audience can hear both the in-person mics and the remote guest. But in order to set up a mix minus for the Zoom guest, we need another mix. The problem is that we only see mix one and two show up within Zoom when using a Mac, and this is already being used for our main mix. However, Black Hole acts as a virtual input to Zoom when we select it as the microphone source. We can route things to Black Hole using Ladiocast. Within Ladiocast, I'll select Black Hole as the main output, then I'll select the RME interface as input one, and select the channels I want to use here. Let's use three and four. To feed these input channels with a custom mix minus, we'll first use the loopback button on output three and four. Then we'll send the in-room mics only to that mix minus mix. And we see these input signals coming in on input one within Ladiocast. So let's send that to the main output, which is black hole. I know this is kind of complicated, but this is a workaround that we've needed to use up until very recently. There's luckily a new feature within Zoom that simplifies this process greatly, but I wanted to teach you the workaround in case you're using a video conferencing software that doesn't have the new feature that's built into Zoom. In the latest version of Zoom, you can make it all work without Laudiocast or Black Hole. Just scroll down to the option called Use Specific Audio Input Channels. First, use the checkbox to enable this feature, and then click the Audio Input Channels button. 
This now allows us to bypass the limitations of many Mac applications and select any of the channels we'd like to use. Instead of input one and two, we can now tell Zoom to only listen to input three and four. Our mix minus is already set up on input three and four, so this is the option we want. Again, if your video conferencing software doesn't have this option, you'll need to use the LadioCast and Black Hole workaround. I know it's annoying, but at least it'll get your show up and running. In the next video, you'll learn how to optimize your audio for a live stream. I'll see you over there.